Alrighty guys, Herpy here. Today we're gonna build a millworm breeding colony. We just want a colony of millworms so that we have a steady supply of food for our geckos. Specifically leopard geckos, which is what I have. Now, six weeks ago when I got the leopard gecko, I got a thousand large millworms and they arrived a couple of days before she arrived, so I had them on hand when I got her. Now, this is the aftermath of those thousand millworms. When I started off with the millworms, I had them in this bin, in wheat bran with some sliced potato. Let me zoom on in and show you what I got. Alrighty guys, I started off with these two 15 and a half quart containers. I actually started with my thousand large millworms in this one. It was six weeks ago. And now you can see, as I did that, they were turning, they were beginning to pupate. So the worms themselves, there's a few left in here, but the worms actually end up turning into these guys right here. The worms will morph into these alien looking guys. These are the pupa. Now, once these guys become this way, they're completely helpless. They're defenseless. So what you want to do is set them aside in a separate container and then they'll turn into the beetle. Every day when I would go feed the uh, gecko, I would just pick them out and throw them in the other container until eventually there weren't any more millworms in this uh, container either so they're pretty much all morph or in the process there's just a couple of worms left in there so at this point we have our beetles breeding and laying eggs now that we have our beetles breeding and laying eggs we need to facilitate that so that the beetles don't eat the eggs the eggs have as best chance of hatching and becoming a millworm or morphin, however that technically happens. Um, the beetle lays the egg, the egg becomes the millworm, the millworm morphs into that pupa I was just showing you, and then eventually he'll shed that shell and a beetle will come out of that. That's the life cycle. All right, well now they're, they're, they're laying their eggs, we wanna make this an optimum situation. So what we need is a screen. We need another container with a screen on it, they'll burrow down into the wheat bran and lay their eggs on the bottom. Those eggs will actually fall through into a container down below. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna build, and those will be our actual breeding chambers where the beetles are. I'm gonna have two of those. And then we're also gonna build as a sizing rack. Basically, it's a sizing rack or a millworm tower that this process, is gonna take, so if I put the millworms in the top of my rack and move it down one every week, by the time it gets down to the ninth layer, it should hopefully be timed right. It might not be perfectly a week. It's gonna depend on the climate. Temperature, moisture, everything comes into play when it, uh, determining how long these guys take to go through their life cycle. So I'm hoping I got it about right. These guys took six weeks and I'm sure they probably were worms for about three weeks before I got them. So I'm gonna build a nine rack system. Then that way every week I put the new eggs in the top and just bring all the trays down. Take the bottom one out, dump the beetles in the beetle chamber, let them breed, lay the eggs. Take the eggs from the bottom that had been collecting over that week. Then I'll dump, dump them back in the top with the new fresh layer of the wheat bran. So let me go ahead and get into the supplies needed to do all that. I got those today at Walmart. It cost me about $50 for everything. These are gonna be my beetle breeding chambers. This container, I'm gonna go ahead and use since I already have it. It is gonna act as the bottom that catches the eggs. So this is gonna sit right in here just like that. I'm gonna have some cardboard and um, some of the egg crate stuff in here for the beetles to climb on. And then in the bottom, there'll be a screen with the thin layer of the wheat bran for the female to burrow down into. Layer eggs, falls through the screen into the bottom. So what we need to do now is get the screen on the bottom. 
All right, here's our breeding chamber for the beetles. We need to cut the bottom off. Now, when we do this, I'm just gonna freehand it. But all you have to do is keep in mind, you wanna leave a ledge all the way around the edge so that you can hot glue your screen to it. You need a surface to hot glue your screen to. So leave about an inch around. Whenever you go to pick out your container, pick a good one for that. This one here, I'm just gonna kinda go around this square in the middle that actually raises up into the box. I'll cut that out. And then just hot glue my screen on this bottom. Alrighty guys, so I've already almost made a mistake here and split my plastic, so let's try this without any, hopefully any problems. What I'm doing is I'm angling my blade. I'm putting it at an angle and hopefully, ooh, it wants to just crack. All right, we made it. Made it down two sides without, I think it's gonna be fine. Oh yeah. Some brittle plastic right here, it's wanting to crack. All right, we got it. We got a hole. We still have an edge around the side. We can hot glue our screen onto. This is some stainless steel screen. I got a roll. It's a four foot roll. It was like $9 at Walmart. Get her lined up good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Lay that flat out. Just hold that out. Right here. Am I on camera yet? That shit ain't done. You done with it? Yeah. Okay, now that we have our screen cut to size, let's go ahead and just start hot gluing her on. I'm gonna get one side. Just something to tack it onto real quick. Alrighty guys, so what we got today was, we got these two containers, we got the screen, it was stainless steel screen, so it is metal. 
Um, I don't know if the beetles can chew through plastic or not, but I don't even want to risk it. So I just got some stainless steel. It won't rust. I'm sorry, aluminum as well. It won't rust, so um, they shouldn't be able to chew through it. That's metal screen. That was $8.70 for the roll of screen. I just might have used a tenth of it. The two containers were 6 or $7 a piece. And then I got three of these three drawer systems for our sizing rack. The cool thing about our sizing rack, I learned this when I got home, I did not know. I've already put this together. Now, if you look, let me see if I can get you a close up. Look, up in, right up in there, there's a little tab. Right, let me get the angle. There's a tab in there. And if I pull that tab, this will separate, all right? So you can actually, it breaks though. That little tab, I, I broke the first top. So once you take this off, this tab right here was the tab that that leg went in and held it in place. You can see it broke. So whenever that, when that's yanked off, that tab is broke. So now this won't go back on and stay. But I don't care because I want to stack them. And these are already like each one of these sections has that tab. Now that I've took that off, I can actually, that'll snap right down in there. So now, I have a stack of nine drawers all right so this is my sizing rack and the reason I I chose the nine drawers is I would like to have to empty this bottom one once a week that's the idea and um, I've calculated that it's gonna take with the climate I have in my reptile room it would take approximately nine weeks for the millworms to go from the, the very small, almost microscopic worms that you can't even see as soon as they start hatching to pupa down here or beginning to pupate and become beetles down here. And what I'll do is once they begin to pupate down here, I'll be feeding the millworms, I'll be feeding the reptiles, these bigger millworms from down here also. So I'll just be picking my pupae. I'm gonna have a separate container on top just for them. I'll just pick them out and throw them in top. And then as those become beetles, they'll go right over into my, uh, the beetle chambers. So that is our sizing rack. That'll come down, this will come out. The thing I don't like about this is that I'm gonna have to do this once a week. Every week, I'm gonna have to move them all down one. It's not that bad, but this actually has a nub on the edge right here. So when you slide it in, it catches and tries to keep it from coming out. And so you gotta push in on the sides like this to push that nub in and push it down. So I may end up just cutting those nubs off of the drawers so that I can do this easier. Alrighty guys, I have combined my beetles I'm gonna go ahead and put these in my beetle breeding chamber. Now what's gonna happen is the females are gonna burrow down to the bottom. Woo. Alrighty guys, with this system here, we should have a process that should just cycle. And the way that's gonna cycle is, I'll pull this tray out. It'll have my pupa in it that have started to become beetles. I'll dump those in here. This underneath will be the eggs that have fallen through the screen from the beetle chamber. So we can call that the egg catch chamber. We'll dump that in here. We'll put a fresh layer of our wheat bran for the babies so as they hatch they have something to eat on. Set that aside and then all these will get taken down through the process all the way down through the process until this new one goes right back up into the top. All right guys, stay tuned. 
for part two. Once we get a full process, a full cycle ran through this thing and I know exactly what it produces, I'll do a part two and update you guys on what the production is, the capability of production out of this system. So make sure you subscribe to see that video. Any questions, comments, or concerns, leave those in the comments section. Thank you.